Hi, this is a remade review about this camera. This is a Fujifilm Finepix HS50 EXR, a 16 megapixel high end bridge camera released in 2013. Bridge cameras are basically compacts with long zooms with similar controls and handling of a DSLR or mirrorless system. Thus, in 2014, instead of budget DSLRs from Canon and Nikon, I picked up a discounted HS50 to start learning photography. This was my seven year long experience. First impressions are that this thing is not small. With such a towering lens and manly posture, it's too easy to mistake the HS50 as an SLR. But that lens is non-removable, nor is the viewfinder optical, instead electronic amongst other things. Those don't take away how well designed the body is. Its deep grip feels to be molded around my very hand. It's that comfortable. I've rarely had any issues with its button layout, which provide a wealth of controls expected on a DSLR body, like the command dial for quick scrolling, and this quick menu to access parameters on a whim. These may look daunting to a beginner, but not to worry, as its auto modes fully covered the point and shoot experience. When you do start learning about exposure and want to take control, there's your standard semi and fully manual modes. Adjusting is quick and intuitive, with a fairly wide range for creative shooting and to make the most out of your situation. Though the HS50's defining feature is its fully manual zoom, which no bridge camera in production has. Its action is smooth and feels nothing short of professional. The 42 times zoom range covers an equivalent field of view of 24 to 1000 millimeters. To put it into context, the same reach on an SLR or mirrorless will be several times the bulk, weight and price. This focal range allows you to dabble into almost any type of photography without having to carry different lenses. Plus the zoom gets you to see detail no other camera could, at least within a tight budget. Helping you out at these focal lengths is its lens based optical image stabilization. It's decent. The HS50 focuses remarkably close with its macro mode on. And you can pop in attachments due to its filter thread. The dial on the left allows you to switch to different focusing modes. Single has selective area and tracking. This continuous. And manual where you have control via this ring with the aid of peaking plus a distance scale. Yep, an actual focusing ring. For an 8 rolled camera, it's still as snappy to use as anything today, especially autofocus, a hybrid of phase detect and contrast detect at that, practically instant under good conditions. Shutter lag is non-existent, and it rolls through single shots, as well as provide up to 11 FPS burst, full resolution. This can help you learn an underrated aspect of photography, timing. When things around you converge into something interesting, it won't last long, but this thing will be ready when you are. And with the capability of shooting raw, you can also dabble into the world of post-processing. The LCD screen holds up well, in my opinion, High res and is fully articulating, an exclusive premium to pricier cameras back then. The electronic viewfinder, however, is less stellar. It's tiny and is like looking down a well, though also high res and otherwise usable. Overall, the HS50 was and is a unique camera in its handling, manual zooming that no longer exists in bridge cameras and how much photographic control it can give you. So it may come as a surprise that I've replaced mine with a mirrorless system. And for someone looking for a beginner tool, I'd recommend against buying one of these. It's simply due to age. 
This continued in 2015. HS50s are pretty rare in the UK, though a reliable stream can be found on eBay, ranging from 200 to 270 pounds. This is kind of expensive against other newer bridge cameras, with longer zoom ranges and better features. It may be a different story in your country. But being around 8 years old, HS50s have a problem of their bodies becoming sticky with age, attracting everything it touches. This is due to the matte rubber coating that feels premium at first, but becomes soft from sunlight and oils. Cleaning it is a tough challenge. Additionally, its age means that components themselves start breaking down. This one's mode dial acts up every now and then, switching modes and interrupting whatever you are doing. It's ultimately these that a beginner photographer shouldn't have to face, especially if there are more viable alternatives. But you do you. This is my second HS50 after all. There is one negative that is highly subjective, and that is image quality. The sensor size is around the same as a smartphone, thus if you're a phone shooter expecting DSLR-like quality, um, don't. It honestly doesn't matter too much if you post on Instagram or make small prints. The reason for this small sensor is to get this massive zoom range in a compact package. Larger sensors require larger optics, thus they'd be heavier and very pricey, there's no going around that. Though photography gear is all about compromises and whether the trade-offs made to get this long zoom are worth it for your shooting needs. One trade-off is image quality. The HS50's noise reduction frankly destroys detail, so I've set it to the lowest for JPEGs and do noise reduction myself on RAW files. I'll be able to show you my methods in this video. Another is depth of field, or getting blurry backgrounds, which people call bokeh. To put it very simply, under the same field of view, smaller sensor cameras produce less background blur than larger sensor ones. Great for landscapes, not so much for isolating your subject. Plus, it makes it difficult to learn manual focusing, despite very good controls. Nor could you swap the lens. One of the reasons is the aperture diameter. The larger it is, the shallower our depth of field, and the HS50s is relatively small in order to accommodate that zoom. Otherwise it would balloon in size, weight and cost. Compromises. Blurry backgrounds though are still possible, as you could step back quite a bit and zoom in, and you could get it. Anyone who says small sensor formats can't make bokeh, frankly don't know their gear. Though if you want finer depth of field control at wide to standard focal lengths, you'd find bridge cameras to be limiting. Last trade-off is low light performance. Also related to the sensor size and aperture diameter, the larger it is, the more light can be gathered. The same compromises apply to get that focal range. The HS50's variable aperture means you lose light as you zoom in. It's not wholly incapable, you just need to put in work for decent results. Just stick in between the wider standard focal lengths, or 24 to 50mm equivalent. Shoot at slow shutter speeds, which help keep the noise down, but requires steady hands or a tripod. Another way is to use flash, where the hot shoe capability proves useful, but TTL capability is limited to Fujifilm's own line of flashes. But my favourite way is to mess around with long exposures. Do I need everything to be frozen still? I'm no artist, but thanks to the HS50's manual controls, exploring this type of photography became a favourite. That is until harder limits creep up. Firstly, no bulb function. Shutter speed priority only goes down to 4 seconds, beyond that must be done at full manual. Even then, it's heavily limited by your ISO. Double that and your shutter speed gets halved. But these are only problems under extreme low light, like doing astrophotography. Despite these limitations, the HS50 was a fairly unknown gem for starting photography. 
its DSLR-like ergonomics and handling made it fun to use. Working around the inherent limitations felt rewarding after you got used to it. And let's not forget the zoom that opens you up to more perspectives than any other in its budget. But if you aren't making full use of it, then the compromises in depth of field control and low light performance aren't worth it. Hence, I moved to a mirrorless system. And even without its age and quality control issues, there are very compelling alternatives for the price of an HS50 here, like newer bridge cameras, or the old DSLR slash mirrorless route, a kit lens for general shooting and a prime for low light and depth of field control. In fact, you might not even need a dedicated camera. The ones in smartphones are getting more impressive each day, and there's so much in photography that you can learn with one. Does this mean my HS50 will live in a drawer and collect dust? I was planning it to, though the ironic thing is that I rarely use this for what it's best at, what it trades off so much for. So I've been taking it with me again, as a secondary camera that provides the reach my main one couldn't. In the small amount of photos taken, it makes sense. Bokeh is a mood concern as it's naturally at the long end, and you'd have to forgive the noise and resolution associated with the small sensor. It's part of the package. I hope you found this version of the review helpful. I've updated my DP review gallery so you can have a look at the photos in greater detail. This is a budding photographer. Thanks for watching. See you soon.